Hello, guys, everyone out there in clown world. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am so, so excited about um, this interview. It's been so, uh, so long coming. Um, we're going to get into that in a minute. But if you are new around here, guys, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing this information. It all helps the channel out. So without further ado, um, we have today Mark from Forever Conscious Research Channel. Now, um, I only came across uh, Mark's work around about six months ago because all you guys were in the comments saying, check out Mark, check out Mark. And I'm like, who is this Mark guy? <laughs> and uh, obviously I went over to his channel and, and uh, became hooked on his content. And what I like about what you do is you you're basically dealing with a pile of dog shit but you do it in such a way that um is very um personable um very light-hearted uh, and i love what you do so welcome mark um how are you doing thanks. thanks tony i'm doing well that's really kind of you man i mean yeah i try to make it light-hearted and you know get some laughs in as much as possible because it, it really is a clown world just like the way you introduced the beginning of the talk today. I mean, it, it, it doesn't deserve anything less than laughter. And there are a lot of serious moments contained within the content that I talk about all the different experience or cases and just common sense of what is this whole experience that we're going through. And so if you don't, if you can't laugh, if you can't be sarcastic and, chill out once in a while, then you're taking it too seriously. And you're just, in my opinion, letting this system win. Um, so thank you, Tony. I appreciate the kind introduction. Thank you for oh, having me well. on. No, It's about well. time we got this going. <laughs> yeah. We've, uh, we've had so many, um, spanners thrown in the works to this and, uh, and then you got caught in traffic tonight and I'm thinking, Oh, oh is he gonna, is he gonna make it? Is it gonna be, yeah. uh, we'll have to put it off again. And, I don't know. Are you finding, I, I mean, I speak a lot about it in my videos, um, particularly the last year or so, just events around me seem to mess up things or I, I have a real issue with just noise. Um, uh, like there'll just be construction going on as soon as I start something or something mm -hmm. will happen. Do you find the same thing right now? Um, as far as the noise is, well, I mean, I guess I can't say no, but I mean, it, the noise thing I have had issues with, especially like some of my early videos, <laughs> I would do them outside and, you know, like light clockwork, the lawn mowers would go off and the weed whackers and the garbage truck would be banging and pulling. I mean, on and on. I mean, it's, it's happened <laughs> a lot in my earlier videos, but I was also outside more, but I mean, it was just funny, the timing of it and kind of more recently, it just, it seems like I can not really do what i would like to do on the channel as far as sharing different information new information and it just ever since like last october it's just been non-stop like i'll get something finished or finally finish up a couple things that absolutely require my attention and then boom uh i'm ready to do something for the channel or just even you know read read some books do some more research, something just to take a load off. And then boom, something else pops up all of a sudden. So, I mean, it's just been nonstop. I also find that time has been speeding up. I don't know how you feel about that, but I mean, it just, I can't believe it's, it's March. I mean, it's, I don't know about you, but. <laughs> yeah, I find the same. I mean, it just, yeah. everything's going so quickly and, you know, they're rolling just one side up after another, like every day you wake up, I look at my phone, I'm like, is it aliens today or is it, war? <laughs> is it like, what we do today? It's like, yeah. but um, I, it's kind of touches on what you said. And, and actually someone that I, I interviewed earlier, Ola Wolny on my channel. And, you know, she was basically saying the same thing, you know, this, this is kind of a game and you, if you take it too seriously um, and it, it, there is serious connotations to it. For sure. I mean, we can't go around ignoring what's going on, but no. you, you've got to have a laugh at it and you've got to find the light. And you say a lot in your in your channel that, you know, we have to find the joy, we have to find the happiness. And even if, you know, even though this is a soul trap, it doesn't mean that we can't um, experience good things. 
Yeah, you gotta enjoy yourself. I mean, I always kind of also like to say, it's like, hey, this is our last time, right? I mean, I don't know about a lot of your listeners, but I'm sure many of them do not want to come back, you know, if you're, if they're watching you. So, um, you know, enjoy your last time, go have some fun, you know I mean? And you know, if funds are limited, it could be small things. Like I'm going camping for not about six nights, five nights and, and, uh, tomorrow. And then, you know, I, I enjoy little things like going to concerts, um, uh, taking hikes, going to the park or, going out for a nice dinner. I mean, simple things, you know, some, the occasional vacation or something, but I mean, you got to enjoy yourself, you know, I mean, find something that doesn't always involve being in front of a screen or being pissed off at this whole situation that we're in. Um, but I also think it's natural, right. For people to go through, these processes. And I like to, I mean, it's literally like the stages of grief. I mean, it's it, when you run into this and, and process it and, and really start to go deep within and say, Oh, wow. It really, this all makes sense now. Now yeah. it makes sense. And there it's difficult. Like, um, I went through a number of years actually before I even, I mean, I was, almost entirely convinced for quite a long time that it was true, but I didn't want it to be true. I was finding every excuse in the book for it not to be true. And yeah. then that was it. I mean, it just got to the point where it's like, okay, I can't just keep uh, allowing cognitive dissonance to take over me um, yeah. and denial uh, in general. So yeah, I mean, everyone has to find their happy place or at least content place. You got to enjoy yourself. You have to, you can't just sit on the computer all day and be pissed or you can't worry about fighting the matrix and all that stuff. Just everything boils down to, you know, your, your area, you know, your, your life, you, those who you're associating with, you know, friends online or friends in real life, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. Make the best of it. That's, that's all I can really say. It's, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Absolutely. And the matrix hates it. The matrix mm -hmm. hates it when you're happy. So, um, yeah. And they hate uh, the middle path too. They hate, they hate, you know, non-reactionary, right? I mean, they, yeah. they want us to react and, and happiness. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they definitely feast off of the negativity more than the positive, but they do feast off both, but they love that negativity. There's something about that. They, they just love it. Absolutely. And uh, it was when, when I, I mean, I, I kind of knew, knew that this was a soul trap for a while, but I'd never gone into like the depths. I mean, I, I've dealt a lot with like clearing entities and I, I'm very aware of how they masquerade and uh, cloak themselves and things like that. So I had that, I was coming from that background, but when I stumbled across your, your work, it was like, wow, this is like the cherry on top is this is like, it completes everything because there's a lot of people who have that grief when they wake up from the new age movement. Yeah. Um, and then I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, you were a new age. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it not like it, it depends. Like I, I fell into it. Let's put it that way, you know, for <laughs> enough time. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's, it's absolutely right. What you said there about, um, you know, the, the denial and the grief and the not wanting it to be true. So many people, and it's so it's such a difficult job getting over this information because it doesn't make people feel good, right? <laughs> you're talking of entities, and you know you're telling them that angels aren't actually good and all that stuff, and you know we're being recycled. It's it's very difficult to get this across in in a way um, that's palatable for people. But mm -hmm. it's so important that people aren't ruled by their feelings and their emotions because if you are, you're probably going to get recycled back round again. So it really is imperative. Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, I mean, this place, I, I like to equate it to the fear, guilt, shame matrix. I mean, it really just, that's its goal is to, and, uh, it just wants us to continue to garner attachments and, and, you know, including our loved ones, our friends, extended family, pets, on, on, on. I mean, it, 
it 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 it's set up in such a perfect way um that it's in my opinion it seems close to impossible you know not impossible but fairly close to impossible like the the odds are so heavily in the matrix's favor i'd love to know what the percentage of liberated beings are like for i don't know every 100 years or what or per year something like that you know like just to get an idea but who knows maybe we'll find that information after we've left here maybe completely you know, uh, maybe that number is going to increase dramatically over the next few years um i as think so are aware of this information i'm sure that's that's what's going to happen so maybe we haven't had the awareness before but um you know certainly it's all coming out now and um sure. hopefully we can bump those numbers up damn right man i mean, i think that's exactly what's going on and and even i think um throughout the eons it's always it's always possible and i think even you know we, we're very fortunate at least like, like how I, I kind of look at things like from a personal standpoint all the data that we have really just drives it home i mean it really makes it so easy to sit back and say hey i mean th this is what it is and now it really makes sense whereas you know if you're if you're born in a different time we you don't have access to that information or um whatever the case would be just sacred teachings that are passed down through maybe like small amount of groups or something that may expose this stuff even then i i, I think anyone can figure it out um it's it's been alluded to and passed down for a long time it's just heavily distorted through things like uh Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Gnosticism, even. I mean, there's a lot of good, I mean, Gnosticism is probably as close as you can get. Um, but you know, uh, <laughs> Hinduism, Buddhism are great at it too. I mean, it's, everything is illusion, you know, um, it shows right then and there the issues and it talks about attachments and, uh, you know, on and on and on. So the beauty is, is that all this information has been out there, but the matrix has put forth their you know distortion on it because it knows that people like you and i and everyone listening here are going to naturally look into those things and well um what better than to have matrix fronts with the things that are as close to the truth as possible without giving you the full-on truth yeah. um so the matrix knows that there's no doubt in my mind that those types of you know, religions, philosophies uh, exist for a reason because they're there to thwart our progress. But I think no matter what eon you grow up in, it doesn't matter. There, there is always a capability of leaving here. It's just like we're in our modern day version of it. That's all. So, I think my it has uh, has to do with intention as well. Um, oh, I mean. Time. You talk a lot about intention in mm -hmm. uh, in your work, and I talk a lot about a lot of it, about, about intention a lot in my work. Because intention, especially in that dimension, it's instant. It's not like here where things take yep. a, a slower. And um, I, I don't know what your story is, but but and I won't go into my whole awakening journey because everyone's heard it before on this channel. But um, when I got pissed off enough at the matrix and what I was doing, the nine to fives, or it was the eight to eights. I remember specifically saying, why am I here? Is there a God? What is going on? What is my purpose? Like for the first time in my life, I was asking those in questions with like real intent behind them. And then what happened? I started stumbling across all these, all this information, 9-11 and, you know, it's different researchers and my mind blew up. My mind blew up like with all this information. So it was from that um, intention of wanting to know what was going on and and really thinking this is wrong like and i think i think people can do that it's up to them it's just 100%. how far people get drawn into it and how pissed off they get before they really start asking those questions and i think what the last two or three years has done yeah there's going to be a lot of deaths from you know you know what and everything but I don't know about you, I've spoken to so many people that have woken up over this time sure. with that same intention of what's going on. And I think, I don't know whether you want to call it quantum physics or whatever, but it it kind of, 
it, it puts those wheels in motion. So I think that is the, the always the, the the first step to, you know, finding the truth, right? Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you, you nailed it. I mean, the, I mean, I pretty much the same thing with me. I mean, I, I was like more, um, unrelenting than I had ever been in my quest for truth and understanding. And like you said, you know, the God thing and, and just sick of everything and, 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 uh, and, sick of like running into brick walls and all that stuff and just wanted answers. And of course, um, the, the matrix is ready and waiting to scoop you up while you're seeking those answers. And, um, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's got it all figured out and ready to go. And, um, I think the biggest thing on at least my journey, I think everyone's journey is, fine tuning the discernment meter as you go along. Um, Cause I find with each passing year, uh, I get better and better and better with it. And so, um, and I think that's just part of a natural progression and that uh, unrelenting intention for truth has never ceased. And uh, I feel like it's like you said, it just, it's, it's, it has to deliver. It has to yeah. make, get some bumpy roads along the way many bumpy roads but there's going to be new truth nuggets along each of those paths too yeah absolutely and you mentioned their discernment which again is something that i talk about a lot it's definitely a lost art and um it, it's like a muscle isn't it the more you use it the more you practice the more you i call it tapping into that frequency of truth because truth mm. has has a frequency and i think that's been um the big problem for people is that they're they they lack discernment or an ability to discern and most people as we know they just want to be told what's going on and they don't want to question it at all so a big solution is really especially like when we die you know mm-hmm. <laughs> uh to, to have that discernment sure i mean i yeah and and i i think also kind of like rewinding to what you just said about you know, a lot of, a lot of people do want to just be, uh, given truth, spoon fed truth. And, you know, we're also in a situation where we all got to live, right? We all got to pay the bills. We all got to eat. We all got to pay for gas and electricity and, and on and on and on. And, you know, it makes it difficult for someone to have the time to seek truth. But that whole thing that we've all experience over the last few years did open that avenue for a number of individuals. And I don't know if the system necessarily thought that part out fully by ha- a lot, by giving money, having your friends and family all at home with an internet connection. And then there comes a point you can only watch so much Netflix and Hulu and all this stuff. And then also like the red flags for anyone remotely paying attention should have been flying through the roof. So uh, I think it opened a, a door like you were talking about earlier that um, there's just a whole new uh, bunch of individuals out there who are asking questions. Yeah. And um, the best thing anyone can do is really research everything for themselves, like get into the nooks and crannies as, as much as you can, if time permits, you know. There's a lot of truth in the saying the devil is in the detail. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really I love that saying because it's that's true. Um, and one comment that one of my subscribers um, put on my channel, I can't remember his name, so if you're watching this, I apologize. But he he said that our greatest purpose or one of our greatest purposes. Oh, your video. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, Grab one of your great one of our greatest purposes in this life is to learn how to die properly <laughs> mm. that was kind of um, a little bit depressing but again it's the truth right we have to we have to figure out what we're going to do from here so we're going to get into this now and i just mm. want to start with your journey into coming across all this ndes and when did all that start when when did you become aware that this was a soul trap Oh. And 
was it just a case of you felt like there was nothing out there that there was nothing break there was no one breaking this down for people well that i mean they're okay like early on in my truth track i would say i'm talking early like probably 2000 oh man it must have been 2007 ish i mean not talking i was by any means in tune with the soul trap at this time i was still extremely lost but there were videos like um um john lear i mean you know i don't put much credibility into the man but uh he there was a video of him talking about how the moon was a soul recycling center and i was like what the hell you know i mean so that always was it was filed away um and you know you could kind of fast forward i, I ran into wayne bush's website um i was also um involved with zen buddhism i considered becoming a monk so there was kind of like that liberation aspect that i was already really into um because i didn't want to come back <laughs> um but i got out of that because i felt it wasn't it there was still a bunch of things missing um i also ran across dan at overwatch channel overwatch project and those two were a, a big catalyst for me um and i eventually i said you know like there, there really wasn't enough talk out there about what was going on and how to see it like wayne's website is is an absolute gold mine for anyone who hasn't checked it out tricked by the light.com i mean and he's been at this for over 20 years <laughs> i mean it's he's he's a He's the OG, in my opinion, of, of really, really, I mean, the amount of effort and work he's put in, you know, obviously there's always going to be things that you don't agree with, with everybody, no matter who you are. I don't care what it is. There's always going to be things, you know, everyone has to walk their own path, but overall his information is bar none, um, uh, was a big catalyst for me. And so like you were kind of saying, and uh, there really wasn't much out there and i was kind of covering you know a regular truth stuff you know breaking down i was doing uh i, I don't know i won't mention any of the topics because it could cause issues for you but there's a bunch, a bunch of different everyday kind of truth or type stuff yeah. and uh you know doing orb summoning and and uh anomalous uh sky watching and interaction and intention work stuff like that and started to realize like hey we're we're a lot more powerful than we give ourselves credit for uh had a number uh not a lot but i've had enough going outside the body enough where even going back to high school through uh some breakthrough trips um so i i kind of had an idea that we were capable of doing amazing things with intention and stuff like that. But as far as like the whole soul trap thing, I felt there was a need to kind of break it down a little more, but even in my videos, I, I know they're long. So that's like a big deterrent right out the gate for a lot of people. Um, it's just, there's just so much to this topic that, you know, um, getting kind of a general idea of what's going on, like you, you need to kind of go through different types of experiences and listen and watch for what they're going to say, because for as much as out there that, um, make that you would think makes sense. There's a lot more that doesn't. And there's a lot more red flags that, uh, I think everyone needs to be aware of. So, um, I think it's it's really really important to kind of be able to to listen out for the red flag so then you could kind of take it and apply it to your own research and say oh okay you know fc's talking about this i see it and you can just kind of go along i mean it just it's like on point every single time and it's um 
I think it's 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 really helpful as like a, a baseline template uh, if you can get through the lengthy videos. But at some point after watching a number of hours or something, um, I think it it'll be easy for most people to kind of take the reins by their own hands, so to say, and see it for themselves through their own you know analysis and things like that. So um, yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a tough thing to make short videos on. I wish I could do it better, but I can't. <laughs> I think you do it fantastically well. And um, yeah, I think you break them down excellently. Thanks. Tony. So, so, so what, so you just started, because I'm curious now. So you just, you're interested in the, in the soul trap from, from uh, the, the person that you mentioned, sorry, uh, trap by the light who I've heard of as well. And so you just started looking into NDEs just out of curiosity, was it? Um, yeah, I mean, NDEs were a big one. They, they were huge because there, the big thing that I fell into was Dr. Raymond Moody. Reincarnation was another big one. Um, Dr. Ian Stevenson, University of Virginia, Division of Perceptual Studies. Um, Dr. Tucker. Um, I mean, those were the big ones because I would, even though, you know, I, I, I meditated and, and tried to expand my consciousness and open up and all that stuff. I, at my core, I was always a little more analytical. Um, I like data. I like patterns. I like to be able to identify things that way. And I found that through those individuals and they were a, they were a huge, huge piece of it. And then you know, started to look into other things like pre-birth memories and past lives and, and all that stuff and coma experiences and shared death experiences. And, and you, and then that's where the commonalities really started to click more and more. So I would say near death experiences and reincarnation were the two big ones. Oh, and before that, um, another big one was uh quote unquote alien abductions, which I like to kind of just entity abductions, right? Entity interactions that are you know oftentimes horrible um and deathbed visions visitations things things like this it was really like a branching off but i would say even before uh like going heavy in ndes the, the alien route was a big one <laughs> you know even though like i was involved with looking at ndes and 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 reincarnation cases like i was fascinated by aliens and ufos so they kind of all were mixed together and then one would take a little more precedence over another and then put some other ones in the back burner and then concentrate on one's a certain specific thing like NDEs or reincarnation for a time and then move along and maybe revisit. So yeah, it was a, just a weird path, but the data was always the big one for me. I liked, I liked as much, evidence as possible yeah, yeah that was consistent so that was huge for me how about yourself uh well the, the like you the i i the soul trap was in the, the back of the the head and i thought yeah it's probably a soul trap but i i didn't have any substance to the to that you know the the, the substance i got was from your channel so um so yeah it's really a, a very recent thing that i've gone really deep into those as you say those nooks and crannies and the the, the devil in the detail um which um you know i think um is the the cherry on top of the pile of poo <laughs> basically yeah. um so okay so let's get into um the actual bs side of things um yeah. when when someone dies from watching your channel, the, the main one is the light and that kind of thing. So how does that kind of normally manifest for people? Does it manifest in a different way for people? Because I know these things are tailored to people quite often. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a customization that occurs and, um, and could make a huge difference on whether someone kind of has a, a hellish, experience which i think are not as often but they can happen but it's again based on 
the mindset based on, you know, are you feeling, are you feeling guilty? Are you feeling uh, like you've sinned and that, you know, you need to atone, uh, you need to be redeemed in the eyes of God or whatever the case may be. That's a huge part of it. And then there's um, those who will have the belief system that, you know, they, they're going to go and meet God or Jesus or Allah or, you know, on and on and on. You pick it. One. Yeah, loved one, uh, a pet. I the, mean. You've, you've seen where pets have shown up. Yep, they do occur. Uh, not yeah. not all that often, but they do. They absolutely occur. That's so um, yeah. And uh, let's see. Uh, you could have, yeah, you could have uh, a wife, a husband, a deceased child, a grandparent um a deity i mean it goes on and on i mean i think it's the matrix takes the opportunity to it, it, it it's 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 an ai system i can't see it being anything else it just it has to be i mean it's just too like consistent for it not to be and i think what it does is it you know it'll process tony's life and jumble it all up and as you're dying, it's going to spit this information into the AI system and it's going to say, okay, well, this is what we think we can throw at Tony to best win him over. Mm. And it's likely going to win. But I think that the, if obviously you go to the light, I, I, I think the biggest, the, I mean, the biggest error, and we've all done it, obviously, because we're here. <laughs> I mean, we've fallen for it. Um, but I think a lot of us are also, you have probably been seekers for many lifetimes and just were a little, a little off, you know, in our most recent incarnations, but not anymore. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I think the light is so powerful. It can't be stated enough how powerful the light is. It's, it's this, it's like a drug that you can never even put into words or compare to here on earth. I mean, it's, it is so powerful. I mean, it, it's the love bomb. It's the, you're in cl cloud nine for lack of a better word. And it's then on top of it, you think you're dealing with God usually, or Jesus or whoever. I'm sorry. Did you say Tony? No, no, it's, it's, it's what you're talking about from what I've, I understand from your videos. It's, it's actually, uh, the, a feeling of unconditional love quite often oh. that these people and I would um, I would uh, liken that to some kind of like Reiki grid or something like that maybe even stronger which is like new age fake um, and so so that that's very hard to not walk, like allegorically speaking walk away just from that feeling alone right plus you've got the dead pet or you've got the deceased family member or your deceased child plus that love bomb so that's how they get most people would you say yeah no i i think and it, it's the the love is so intense and and individuals will say who have these experiences over and over and over and over and over and over again until you can fall flat on the floor they will always say that it feels like they were at home that they've been there before like that's where they're supposed to go they say it constantly. So um, there is a familiarity there too. And you kind of throw in like the, the God thing, the Jesus thing, the deceased relatives thing, the pet, whatever you throw all that, the attachment aspect, the soul group kind of aspect on top of like this love bomb and familiarity and this home type of feeling. Uh, it seems all but impossible to avoid um, so that's why going to the light is just, in my opinion, the worst decision any of us could make. Um, and working on that now, throwing that intention out there that you are not by any means, it's simply not allowed. I like to say that all the time. It's simply not allowed. You are not going to the light. You're not even going down the tunnel. You know, you're not going to go into the matrix void. Because there, there's even the void-like realm, like you know. That's and, what I wanted to touch on, yeah, which I, sure. which I think is important because it seems like we were talking earlier that they tailor through some kind of algorithmic thing. So maybe someone like yourself or me, we're we're not 
they probably know that we're not going to go to the light. So they might try something else. And I've heard this on a number of your um, breakdowns. You mentioned a void. Does that come instead of the false light or? Well, I think the void is dependent again on the mindset. That is kind of how I've looked at it because uh, the other thing is, is if you're in the void, the, the light is most likely going to be in the distance. It's like both of them are right there. Now right. the light could be, I mean, I've, I've spoken with someone who, you know, was getting their ass kicked six ways to Sunday in the void. Horrible experience. He was a Marine sniper. So obviously he's got some baggage. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, you know, you're in that kind of profession. I'm sure it's going to eat away at you, you know, as things get bad and he went into yeah, guilt and shame oh. taking that with you, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, I think if you're in that type of thing and, and you had, and he was religious, um, it's going to be pretty hard to bypass that. So when he was in the void, he was getting his ass kicked and, and there was this altar for him. It was an altar, but in the altar was a white light. And so while he was getting his ass kicked, the altar, anytime he'd kind of concentrate at the altar, it would give him relief. It would give him that serenity, that solace within. And it was the altar, the light, that ended up redeeming and flipping the experience, shutting it off. So um, I think just like there is the light itself, the light is still involved with the void-like realm, and but they're two sides of the same coin. They're they're basically a a, a fake void, you know, that is set up. And I think the reason for that, this is just my gut feeling. I have nothing to go on it with, but this is kind of just my gut. I feel that our stripped down bare existence is something equivalent to an observer in a void like realm, void like state. Um, now, of course, you know, who wants to hang out in that for <laughs> eternity, you know, but I think that might be the reason why it's there. I mean, that's just kind of like my gut on that. I mean, it could be wrong, but um, who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean, the delight in the tunnel, I mean, you know, apply your intention, you know, put it into your, you know, if I'm a big one for morning affirmations and, you know, doing some meditation um, in the morning or whatever mindfulness alarm, you know, put that out there that, you know, your intention is firm. It's unrelenting. You're not going to be dealing with any tunnel or any light or any fake void or any entity interactions, nothing. Um, I think that's so important to to make sure that that's being put out there regularly so that it's, it's not that you're doubting yourself. It's like, for me, the, the wild card is the dream world, Tony. Like, there's something there that, is a little concerning for me because we go there night after night. Sometimes we remember, sometimes we remember fragments. Sometimes we don't yeah, remember a damn thing. There as well. Exactly. Yeah. So what's going on there? I yeah. mean, are we making weird agreements or, or is something going on there that we aren't necessarily in tune with when we come back here? I think there's a very high chance of it. So, you know, my opinion is to, to put out, your intention of liberation and non-interference, shielding, all that stuff before oh, bed. Okay. And then when you wake up, so. I would, sorry, just to add on to that energetically sure. as well, I would suggest um, burning any contracts that you may have made in when you've been out of your body dream in like dream world, sure. anything you've agreed to. Yeah. Disavow yeah. any and all contracts. Yeah, just just create like a fire in your mind and just envisage contracts going in with that and that that would that will also help clear that. That's yeah. a really good point. I never thought about um the dream. But just going back to um so it seems like that they've got the Kool-Aid for the people that are easy, the light, the the dead loved one or the angel and everything, and they're like they're easy. But then it seems like with the void and from people that have experienced the void, 
it seems it doesn't seem very pleasant. It's like dark and and I've heard different variations. And it almost seems like they need to scare those people a little bit more. And then they problem, reaction, solution. Mm -hmm. the there solution you go. <laughs> which in this case is the altar. And the soul is like, oh, thank God for that. And they're, they're, they're probably there with, with open arms. Is that how you would sort of break that down? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it works. I think it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it it's usually just the light in the distance with that one example. It was so it was just, you know, an altar with the light in the middle, but a lot of times it's just the light in the far distance or, or the light in the corner, but you know, you can't necessarily get to it right away, but it is kind of like your happy place if you look at it. But I mean, I think uh, it's so hard to say definitively because those types of experiences really, really, really depend on the mindset of the individual, just like with those who go to the light. So um, oftentimes we're getting little bits and pieces of information. Some are perfectly content in, in the void like realm, no problem. And then there's others who, you know, uh, are have a very, very difficult time. And I think, that kind of goes to the whole sensory experience on earth, right? I mean, it's like, go, 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 go. We have all this going on around us all the time. And then it's like, boom, you know, I, that could be easy to see how someone could be a, li a little um, jarred by that, or maybe even think they're in hell or um, whatever the case may be. So uh, I yeah. guess it really, really depends on, the individual because everything is customized so yeah, yeah. The mindset. Well, your flavor um one one point i wanted to make and it was really uh weird really synchronistic um because mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago i had this uh insight about when we when we're in a hospital like when you're gonna die or palliative care how much they dose you up on morphine mm -hmm. and stuff and that must really distort your consciousness at the point of death. So I'm like, wow, that's another that's another part of it. And then I listened to it sure. the other day, and you mentioned exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I would say to people, not telling people what to do, but maybe you might want to think about refusing that if you end up in that kind of scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a... A shitty thing, right? Um, to 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 talk to even have to to say that because you know it's like, hey, you're on your way out, and you know you you're in tremendous pain, or you got a terminal illness, or or any sort of hospice situation where pain is big. I think it, it the line needs to be drawn on you know at least minimal you know, at least some sort of relief, not to the point where you're zonked out, incapable of communicating, or that they're going to, you know, at least in America, what they do is they, they give you, you know, they, they OD you, you know, until you die. I mean, that that's kind of what happens. Like when you're on your way out, they overdose you. I mean, that's, they don't say that, but that's what's going on. And um, I think that is... I would not recommend it. I mean, I know it's easy for us to sit here and say that now because, you know, you're not, we're not sitting in hospice and, and in tremendous pain or something, but there has to be a middle ground, right? Um, well, I mean, there is alternatives out there, you know, yeah. CBD and other things like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to bring up marijuana, oh. CBD. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with, with a little bit, but. Uh, the problem is, is the doses that they seem to put out there. I, I would say absolutely not. Mm. I mean, why chance it? I, I, I mean, yes, there. When we leave, we leave, but do we want to be clouded? Like it, it, this, this kind of goes off into another thing with deathbed visions and visitations. Like these are experiences that can happen and like prep the individual and convince them to, you know, hey, come, you're about to die. You're not dying yet, but you're close. And, you know, 
mom and dad are there, grandma's there, whoever's there, and they're they're the welcome wagon is ready and waiting to take you. And they're saying, hey, you know, you're about to go, not yet, but we'll be back, and you're going to come with us. So it's like a in a like a, an agreement kind of being made in advance that they're going to go and go to the life review and, and the white light and the tunnel and it, whatever the case may be. And I think that would be kind of more instantaneous. And that is a big, big concern. It, it is. Um, but again, you uh, use your intention, put it all out there, you know, no entities, nothing is allowed to interfere, visit me, nothing period the end. Um, but yeah, as far as the drugs go, as difficult as it may be in that situation, I think it's like, you know, suck it up. Yeah. Suck it up. I mean, you don't want to be, you don't want to be clouded. You want as much lucidity as possible. You deserve to be comfortable, but not to the point where you're incapable of mm -hmm. processing. You know, um, yeah. I think that's a big one. And there's one other scenario that I wanted to touch on. There's probably loads more. Um, I, I haven't got through all your content, but there was one particular one that I remember where the lady was, um, she was a little bit more um, of a rebel, I think, maybe a little bit more like us. And she, uh, and uh, and this this scenario has come up quite quite often. And actually, I, I think I may have even seen this kind of building when I, back in the day, took acid. It was like this big Greek mythological uh, building, and she describes as meeting elders there, and mm -hmm. um, they were trying to hook her in that way. Do, 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 does that one come up a lot? Oh, the the Greco-Roman architecture pops up a lot. Yeah. Um, and experience like you can see it in um, past life regressions uh slash life between lives you can see them in um astral projection standard obes uh you know where they randomly occur breakthrough trips like you experienced um uh let's see did i say pre-birth memories i probably did um even ndes sometimes they'll pop up i mean they it <laughs> The Greco-Roman architecture is there enough. I mean, it's definitely a data point. It pops up. And I th I like to kind of call that like the, and same thing with like the nature scenes, like the the running river, or the mountains, and the, and the beautiful kind of nature realms. I think all this stuff is uh, the continuity of familiarity, right? It is something that we're all familiar with. We live down here. We know what it is. And so I think what they do is kind of relate those settings to yeah. us to make us feel comfortable and more at ease and probably more agreeable. And they make it really beautiful as well. I mean, yeah. I can see the thing now. There was fountains. It had all these gardens around it, like mass majestic place. I was like, whoa, what is this place? Wow. And you so, can... did, so did it, was it, was it, like in a in a cloud type setting or was it like on the ground i mean i've seen a few different ones so i'm kind of just curious it was like um a, the Easy best way setting. i can describe it that's coming to me is like you know when with uh dorothy's walking the yellow brick road and she sees the the what's it the emerald city in the in the, mm -hmm. in the distance it was like that it was like okay i was like i was looking at it and um yeah it had all these like really yeah, Romanesque fountains and gardens and, and but it was all yellow. It was weird. It was it was all all yellow. So were there any entities you interacted with there? Not not that I'm aware of. I mean, obviously, I don't recommend that people do this anymore. This was like way back in the day. I just got to put that in there. <laughs> but um, but it was yeah, it was similar to because when I heard that, I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's the thing that I saw. But but these elders it seemed like they were trying to con cajole her in, in a more, I don't know, like mature way. It was really listening to that one. I don't know if you remember the, the actual, um, breakdown, mm -hmm. but... I, Oh, I don't think it was Mary. I thought it might've been Mary, but I, I don't believe so. Um, 
Was do you have any other thing that kind of comes to mind in that experience? No, I did. Well, she ended up getting hooked back down again. I can't remember. May I think they guilt tripped her. They guilt tripped her with, "Oh, you've got a mission." Actually, we should talk about this. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> so just talk about how. See that that's the sort of thing that they could get someone like me on. I think, like sure. you know, uh, you know, like you, you you've got to finish what you're doing back down there because we are on a like kind of mission, but they use it in a completely different way, don't they? Can you just put some meat on the bones around that? Yeah, um, yeah, the mission, the the purpose, the the you know, basically, it's uh, a, I like to call it a life script, and. We all come here and prior to coming here, we, there's a few different things that happen. Like you, there's our kind of interacting with a, uh, we can call it a teacher, a guy, the council sometimes, but usually it's like a teacher or a guide type setting within our soul group. And they're kind of helping us helping pick out, a life script, you know, for instance, um, what you may end up doing for work, you know, uh, uh, I mean, anything you could think of, almost anything you could think of, and including geographical location, family, picking out parents, blah, 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 blah. But it's, even though, yes, there is some involvement with us picking those things, it's more or less kind of shown and pushed on us too so it's kind of like goes in both uh both ways um and i think it kind of gives us more or less the illusion that um we're kind of in more control than we think and um i'm sorry what we were talking about with the life we script just, type no we were just we were talking about sorry. how the hell we were talking about how they will will say to people, you you've got an incomplete mission down on earth, or you've got something that you need to finish, or that kind of thing. Yeah, that that's um massive, massive pops up in NDEs all the time, or even pre birth memories. Um, um, or even uh, coma experiences too, and the you know, you have unfinished business to do. You have to, you know, go back and do finish this off. You know, you're, you're, you're not, uh, ready to come back yet. You still have work to do it. On and on and on. It's the same old song and dance constantly. And that is just a manipulation tool. Um, also fills the ego, right? I mean, if, if, if someone is out there, and also involved with this amazing experience that, you know, they just came from a, a human body and are thrusted into this massive experience, often involving love and loved ones and, you know, or love bomb and the loved ones and, and whatever the case may be, or thinking that they're dealing with God. And they think that, you know, God, Jesus, their, their family, deceased family are telling them, Hey, look, you still have work to do. You have a mission to fulfill. And they'll come back and this is the crazy thing is like, they will say this all the time. I have a mission. I have this, I've got to finish this and that. But when you really start to listen to what they're saying, uh, consistently, they don't know what the hell they're here for. They don't know. They'll, they, some of them think they know, or a lot of times they'll say, I just hope I know. I'm doing the right, what's the right thing is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's insane. So they have this amazing formative experience, come back here. And most of the, they don't know. They just don't. I mean, <laughs> there are some really amazing things that do come out of this. Like I've, I've met, um, uh, someone, you know, they're not on this with the soul trap or anything, but there's a number of these individuals out there that, you know, they, they did well for themselves before their, the NDE, they have their NDE, they come back and they do do a lot of good. They do. I mean, they, you know, there's some that have opened homeless shelters, food banks, you know, a lot, a lot of good stuff can 
come out of these things, right? But it's what is really going on. That's the problem. I'm sorry. What did you say, Tony? I just said they're still in the matrix. They still yeah, that's their, their that's energy the happened and yeah. they're still, you know, having their rights and freedoms taken away. Yeah. I like what you <laughs> one thing that made me laugh that term that you use is the matrix marketing department. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. And, uh, <laughs> it's it's genius. And uh, what I think, and I think you've alluded to it as well in your videos, is that right now, because they know what's going on, and there's this, I don't really like the word awakening, but, you know, whatever, um, that they're worried they're going to be losing souls. So they're sending these people back down from the NDEs to promote NDEs as a good thing. Yeah, no, there's, it, there's, there's, and um yeah it's just it's it's and it's always like the the same narratives over and over i mean obviously with their own style but it's always the same thing you know everything is love everything's you know you know god is the light source is the light you know the light is home it's God, light, and the home and source and everything wrapped into one and that's where we're supposed to be and I mean, it, it, it is the, and these and the ears come back and they are matrix marketing department agents. I mean, they, yeah, they don't they're, know they're, it, but they are. Yeah. They're Some high, of may know it though. High on the Kool-Aid. Yeah. High on the false light energy and everything. And, mm. and there, they're back down here promoting it. So good. Um, so let's talk about. I mean, before we get on to like the life review, which is kind of like the next stage, would you say? Or is there a stage before that? Oh, let's talk about just the briefly, time. like it, when I've listened to it, there's always resistance about coming back down uh, or most of the time anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like these people, don't, they, don't want, they don't want to come back. They really need convincing. Nope. Yeah, a lot of them do not want to come back. There's very, very few that... You know, <laughs> want to come back to Earth? I mean, um, so yeah, you want me to expand on that? Yeah. yeah. Are there any Are there any other ways that I mean, we we talk about guilt and shame, and and I guess you know whatever their their flavor is, karma. If they believe in that, hell. If they believe in that, is is that the kind of themes that that, that you see in here? Well, with um, the coming back. Um, well, there, there's a few different things. There are, I would say the bulk of them is there, there is usually a, like a family member or some sort of situation back at home that needs tending to like, you know, you like there, there are some that are easy. It's like, okay, you just show them the, the one thing and then boom, they're back. A lot of times right before they come back there's like a little primer like they'll be having a grand old time and oh I've, i knew the answers to all the questions of the universe and god was awesome jesus was awesome blah 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 but then all of a sudden like there's some sort of earthly thing that arises back home that it's like and they'll kind of they'll mention it but then there'll be a little bit of progression and then something bigger may may appear like for instance like oh well you know you you've got your your son your daughter you know your your husband sick at home there was one case i went over i can't remember the name off the top of my head it was crazy they i think they went over let's see it was the okay i think they went over five or six individuals they started off with um the husband like, oh, well, you know, you got your husband back home. She's like, oh, my husband will be fine. I'm going to stay here. And then it was like the son and the daughter. Oh, no, they're fine. They, my husband's going to be there. They'll be fine. My my kids will be at the kids. The kids will be fine. And then it was like there was, one, I think, one other individual. And then they got to, I believe it was her mother. But her mother had cancer. And she needed help down there, you know. So the daughter's got to go back and that it's like they went over each scenario until they hoped her enough that she would be putty in their hands and boom, right back 
taking care of the mom back with the family, which <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So just, just before we get onto the, the whole memory wipe thing, I remember, remember watching one, uh, one of your videos where the, the NDE said that she saw souls queuing up and you, I think you said that they were, waiting for their life reviews or something do you remember um i don't know if it was in a tunnel in, like actually in the tunnel or something oh, okay i think i okay i was i vaguely remember this one i think what i was doing was i don't know if i don't think it was the life review but it was um it there was a comparison that i made to the movie the disney pixar movie soul have you, have you had a chance to see that yeah, yeah. yeah like in their kind of you see like the scene when Joe initially is starting to have his NDE and, you know, about to die. And, uh, and he's going up like this staircase and there's a bunch of other souls kind of going towards the light. Um, and some are completely gung ho, no problem. And others are totally zoned out, like, which is pretty interesting in and of itself. Um, and Joe's obviously trying to fight back, blah, blah, blah. Um, there is, I think if the NDE you're talking about, there was, did she mention two tubes? Like there were some souls coming and then some souls going or something. Yes, that was it. Yeah. Uh, almost like pillars. Um, so who knows? So some were um, in the body, maybe waiting to go into bodies and the others were dying. Maybe. Could, could be. Yeah. I think that's what, what the representation was with that, but I'm not sure if they were on the way to the life review, but it would make sense, you know, yeah. if it was something like that. I just don't recall off the top of my head. We even have to deal with cues in the astral when we die. <laughs> I get, yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird to think about, right? Because... <sighs> well, I'm British. We love cues. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, it makes it makes me wonder like it seems like uh the, the same thing even is talked about with um life between lives where there's uh those accounts the past life regressions or specifically life between lives where yeah there are these cues like it, they're just kind of all being processed through the matrix meat grinder you know being processed that you know next thing you know go to soul classes and the teacher and, or have your rest period. You know, they, they let souls uh, or spirits kick back and relax and have a little time for themselves, go do whatever. And then eventually they come knocking and there's something to do with those soul schools. And I don't know what the hell is going on in those things, but. So it's um, a complete system up there. It's literally, it like, is. it's like, a, it's like going to some organization down here seeing all the workers and, and they, everyone's got their roles and there's cues. It's, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Exactly. There is even, um, in some of the life between lives accounts, they, they say they show even, even some NDEs actually, not all that many, but a lot of the life between lives and some NDEs, sometimes there'll be workers like, you know, plowing the field or picking berries and, and pat, you know, packing them up. Or, I mean, it's almost like it's again, it's more life between lives, but it's almost like these are preparatory classes to get someone used to what life on earth is going to be when they get here. Some that's kind of like my, what my gut says. And yeah. then there's even the classroom setting, like these soul class things, like literal classroom settings. And the interesting thing about it is with the regressions, we don't get, any real information that comes out of those. We know they exist. Uh, regressionists talk about them. They exist. But as far as getting any sort of information about exactly what's going on in there, it seems like there is a cutoff there. Like we're not really allowed to get that information. Now, perhaps that's changed somewhat out there, but from where everything I can tell, there's like a blockade with that information. And I'd be to, be perfectly honest if someone did come and say that they had you know they've been getting access to the soul classes 
in the life between lives realms experience, you know, uh, I would question it heavily right. because I, I, I just don't see it. So I don't know. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, and what do you mean when you talk about soul groups? Okay. Soul groups kind of, we, I think we all have them. Heck, Tony, we may, who knows? We all, we may be in one. We don't even know. Right. Um, we may have been, been acquaintances at some point up in a soul group or anyone else for that matter, or, you know, their family, their friends, heck, it may even be a pet. Who knows? Um, but I know we, for whatever reason, well, that's not whatever reason, we, we have these attachments and they're involved with the soul group and their relationships. They, they, now, for instance, this incarnation I, uh, reincar you know, reincarnated along with a, a number of other individuals that are involved in my soul group. Now, how much impact they have on my life is kind of up for debate, but it does seem like there's like this core group and you might not necessarily have a major impact on each other, but the, the ones closest to you are the ones that seem from everything I can tell to be uh, like tight knitted in your soul group. And then there's like these little extensions off and then the roles will be reversed too. Like even reincarnation cases show this consistently where the roles are reversed, like where a, a child will be born and, you know, uh, the age of three, four five there, they might say, uh, you know, Hey mommy, I, I was your mommy, uh, right. you know, or I was your grandmother, you know, uh, the last lifetime or when I was born before, wow. you know? And so there's always this kind of inter intermingling with the same group. And I think that's all on purpose because mm. it's like this subconscious thing too. So you have a memory wipe. I think we're allowed certain subconscious memories, certain uh, triggering things too. Uh, could be good, could be bad. Um, phobias, things like that. Like, how hypnosis can cure certain phobias, um, you know, for instance, being afraid of heights or uh, afraid of the dentist or or whatever, the, something, some sort of thing that is a big fear. And those things can be worked on in hypnosis. I think the same thing kind of, I don't know why I'm going off on this tangent, but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the whole soul group thing is... Uh, it's pretty blatant and it, and it makes sense because it's a good way for us, for them to prey on our vulnerabilities, our, our love and compassion for those inside of our soul group. So, so really it's strengthening the bonds that we have with people subconscious that are already subconsciously there. So when mm -hmm. it's time to exit the game, it's like, we've got that extra pull, the extra tug on the heartstring. Yep. They're ready and waiting. And uh, there's a number of NDEers out there, um, even in the past life regressions and um, life between lives and um, sometimes even uh, shared death experiences and maybe deathbed visions, visitations where someone will ha like the, like it, the NDEs are, let's just stick with NDEs on this one. Like, let's just say someone has an NDE and they may see um, their deceased mother or father, all right? But there's also others there. And when they come back and they share their NDE, they'll say, I didn't know them. You know, my, I knew my parents, but there were also these other beings there. And I didn't know them from my life on earth, but I knew them very well. Like, mm -hmm. I have know I've known and interacted with them a lot like we were close friends so in my opinion those types of beings are probably like waiting in the wings you know maybe they didn't reincarnate with them in this go around but maybe they will next time mm -hmm. or you know like they just know could be other soul group members that maybe they're just not reincarnating with but there's that bond there that attachment there that again is keeping those connections intact and familiarity so the matrix can unfortunately take advantage of us mm, very cruel very cruel good okay so let's talk about um 
the life review. So in your in your research, is it is it always the same way? Is it always done the same way? Could you just talk us through that process? Life review? Yeah. Um, it's generally everything that kind of happens, it seems um, you know, they'll they'll go hurling down a tunnel most of the time. There's some differences, but with the life review, it's it's pretty simple. Um, y you'll go there and, um, sometimes you'll see deceased loved ones or the Jesus or think you're dealing with God or, or it could anything. And they are going to the council, you know, they're going to say, okay, well, uh, why well, even they're going to say, but like all of a sudden, like the, the, your life will start kind of flashing before you. Some people um, describe seeing it on like an actual screen. Yeah, yeah. Does that differentiate from person to person? Yeah, yeah. That that um, you can't say exactly the reason why there's a difference, but it's the same concept. Some people talk about it's like flipping like a book almost, and then others, like you said, they they see it on a screen, and if they uh, they'll zoom in and out of the screen. Or they'll zoom in and out of like a like a book almost, and and be, you know, basically teleported into that experience. Now, what they do is they'll. It's so weird because they they will pick they will pick moments like so. Think of something very very mundane that you might have done, not thought of it. It was a it was a good thing but it was something that you're really not going to remember. It mm. could be, you know, a lady drops her groceries in the parking lot and you, you help pick her up and put it in a new bag and walk away. All right. So in the grand scheme of things, most people in their life will do a lot better things than pick up the groceries for the old ladies whose bag yeah. broke. Right. I mean, that's just common sense, but it seems that <laughs> in the life review, they love to pick these really weird mundane moments that nobody ever considered or even thought of as a, this amazing thing that, you know, they did in their life, but then they kind of go on to the next part of all this. And that's where anything that you may have done to an individual, um, that's negative, bad, ugly, whatever, just not good. What will happen is, is you will be zoomed in to that experience and live it on the receiving end of the one that you hurt, right? So you will feel all the emotions, all the pain, all the disconnect, everything that comes with whatever the hurt is that you dished out on to that individual. Mm. And so it's interesting how you have, you know, like the mundane thing <laughs> and then like how they really kind of, you know, get you the fully interactive mode for the, yeah, right. the Lucy negative stuff. Right. Yeah, they um, don't, they don't make you feel the, the good that the old lady felt when you picked up her groceries. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so weird. I mean, you can't, you can, but I mean, it's, it's just so, it's so weird that they, they pick the, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's all designed in, in every end of year, almost every end of year will say like, oh, it's, it's, you know, we're not being judged. We're judging ourselves. Yeah. Now, mind you, they're getting blasted with this love bomb. They think they're dealing with God. They're all messed up in the head and, or in the ether, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, it's, I just think it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it really is ridiculous. And they take full on advantage of individuals in, in that moment. And you're not capable of, of really getting out of it. I think once you're, you're there, it's, it's, I think you can, but I sir as hell would never want to test it. Let's put it that way. Mm. I think uh, once there's like the worst, what is that phrase? Like curiosity killed the cat, right? Oh. You know, the lights there in the distance or the tunnel, you know, if you're in the tunnel, you can stop. I've covered NDEs where someone stopped right, okay. in the middle of the tunnel, you know, because they wanted to with their intention. You can stop it. 
But yeah. once you get to that freaking love bomb, it, it seems very, very difficult. So can't say that enough. The last thing you want to tango with is this light, you know? And I like to say, like, if everything I talk about is wrong or we talk about is wrong, you know, and the light is all it's cracked up to be, and I'm sorry, it's not, but let's just say for lack of a better term that it is, don't worry, you can go and hang out with the light later. You know, you don't have to, but you just don't have to make a decision now. You don't have to make a decision right after you leave here. I think that's the the worst thing any of us can do is just, you know, make a snap decision and just have blind faith or blind trust that everything is as it's cracked up to be. Just on that point, because I've I've heard you mention before in videos that another way they get people is you get the people that just go, but it, there's also what it seems is like if there's uncertainty, that's where they will present a solution where the where the persons are. I'm not really sure like what to do. That's when they'll show up as something or or hook them in in some way. So again, I guess it goes back to the point of um, still having that strong intention to leave. And and uh, because it seems like from what you're saying, when you're kind of wafty in no man's land, not really sure, the matrix will come in. Okay, so are you talking about like in in while you're in human form? Uh, no, or like experience when we, when we pass. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. Can you just repeat the question one more time? Um, so uh, basically, um, I've heard you say that they either just straight get people with the light people just mm -hmm. go but also you you've said before that where the person might not necessarily gravitate to the light or is unsure but because they're still unsure of where they're going or what what to do the matrix finds another way to sort of hook them in some way so it just goes back to um still having that strong intention to leave yeah. yeah i think what there there's kind of like these in between realms um they're pretty commonly talked about um even in uh hinduism buddhism stuff like that there's even and some end years will talk about how there's um like this like almost like a waiting room um and then there's also those who um a lot of times my kind of look at all this is a lot of times those who are kind of still hanging around like uh disincarnate spirits or something they're still kind of a lot of them seem to be more or less um obsessed with their most recent incarnation and they haven't been able to kind of shake it off yet so there's kind of that thing going on too um but regardless uh the last thing you want to do is kind of allow interacting with these things right um because you got we can't forget like we're inside of their realms of creation right uh right now we're in their meat suit yeah we have our true essence spirit within and are able to do amazing things as a creator being but we are still limited within the confines of the human body the earth realm you know, and everything that kind of comes along with it. And I think what they have are like, uh, almost like, uh, quadrants, right. Of, of different types of realms that someone can fall into or funnel into. And if there is an interaction, say someone's unsure, like there's, there are cases where, uh, I've gone over where they end years talk about how they saw other beings who were hesitant to go to the light. They didn't want to go. Like they, they were just kind of there existing or whatever the case may be. And so it makes you wonder why are they still kind of in that limbo process? Like if, if, cause they, they're not all disincarnate spirits, you know, they're not, it's just, I refuse to believe that they're not all, you know, they all didn't just have an instantaneous weird death that they weren't expecting coming and have this attachment back on earth. I just don't believe that they're all like that. So um, I just, it just can't be possible. There's, there's uh, gotta be yeah, varying uh, factors. I actually believe that a lot of disincarnate or ghosts, whatever you want to call them, is like a residue from a traumatic death that an sure. entity is, is mm -hmm. taken over. 
um, and true. kind of like mimic it. So, but that's probably for another another conversation. But that's an, so that's an interesting one. So, so you think that? So you think it's a one kind of? Hmm. So you think maybe it's? That's an interesting thought. Yeah, because often you when you hear of ghost stories, um, they're often quite a traumatized death, you know. Sure. Oh yeah. So energetically that would leave um a very sort of strong blueprint or what have you for um another force to use that that, mm. that energy to to manifest themselves as you know as that reflection. Yeah. So So you so you don't think that so you don't think that the the disincarnate spirit is actually the original spirit that came from the traumatic death. It's like an imposter that kind of yeah, took over I, the energy signature uh, of the individual yes, or something. The energy signature is, okay. is what I would what the words I was looking for. Yeah. So I would I would suggest that the soul or the spirit probably is still found itself recycled and this residue has been sort of used by an entity to hmm. manifest itself easier using that i don't know it must be like a negative portal that that creates or something or the yeah so yeah it's so weird how how that whole thing works um yeah i i never really can i mean i definitely can see how uh, that would be possible i just wonder if uh how big an issue that could be because I think you 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 could have those that stick around, but it fully makes sense that <laughs> um, you know because we hear about spirits who kind of like hang out you know in the bars or something, and yeah, they're trying yeah. to feast off of the the alcohol buzz or the meth yeah. high or whatever the case may be. And I think know. I think that all those possibilities can can be possible. Um, sure. You know, there's a here in Mexico. There's um, a very famous ghost story, Le, 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 Lerona. I don't know if you've heard her, but oh, basically, please. her story is that she. Um, this goes back centuries, but she haunts uh, many um, Central and South American places, and she can be heard crying. And the story goes is that her husband cheat. She found out that her husband was cheating on her. And um, she got so upset. I mean, it's extreme. She got so upset that she um, basically killed herself and killed her two children. And she's still like kind of reliving or something like that. So the sadness of it all, who knows? But um, mm. yeah, we could talk about that one all day as well. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, any anything. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. Um, and there are some that I, I think in their gut know that going to light, something is off. I really do. They might not know what it is, but I think that the big issue is that there has already been an interaction with something. Yeah. There is already some sort of something that has occurred that is preventing them from fully accessing their, themselves. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it's so important to kind of learn the, 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 the essence of who we are, our sovereignty, our liberation, non-interference, all these things are so important to learn now and apply now so that there isn't this confusion. There isn't this room for entities to inter inter interject or anything like that. And if for some reason they do, you know that you can shut them down. You know, like if, you know, if you don't have the knowledge or if that knowledge has been blocked off, the wisdom has been blocked off um, and your full essence isn't kind of, for lack of a better word, um, fully intact yet, then it seems like it just makes it easier for them to kind of weasel their way in. And I think it, there is a little bit of a process there. I'm not sure how much, but I think a lot of it has to do with how open someone is like i think it starts with what we were talking about early early on in the, in the talk um it starts with the intention for truth it starts with the intention to uh realize intention you know and and how powerful it is so yeah yeah, yeah. 
Brilliant. So just uh, just finishing up on the life review then. Um, so they use guilt and shame. And obviously, by this point, the soul is pretty much going to be guaranteed hooked back round. Um, do they ever like, th have you heard stories where they threaten things like hell and they tailor that to, to people, you know, or you need to resolve your karma, those kind of things? Do they get said? Well, the karma and the, well, the karma and the sinning aspect to things seem like they are more they come through like it's so weird because they they act like it's not like a judging but at the same time it's like oh well you know you know it's uh, this is kind of like the impression that i get it's like oh you know you, you know you're close you, you did okay you know you could have done better and, and we're going to give you another chance, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's, it's the dangling. It's like, and the other thing is like this, there's this whole like ladder kind of system. It's actually kind of like color coded actually, but it, it it's like this ladder system um, where you're going to work on uh, one of the things I covered in Michael Newton's book was there was someone that was working Right. I might be wrong, but I think it was 5,000 lifetimes on empathy alone. Okay. So just imagine, just imagine that 5,000 lifetimes on empathy alone. Now just think about how many other things that can be linked to that. So if we come across and are about to move on past the life review, they could like, oh, well, you know, you did good, blah, blah, blah. You know, you still have a little bit more to go and Think about all the other possibilities that could be out there. Like, oh, I need to work on joy or happiness or or anger or, I mean, pick it. I mean, there's so many different things that someone could think of that could apply in those situations where it needs to be worked on, you know. Um, or, so do they promote the whole idea that Earth is a school up there? I say up there. Pretty much, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah so, I mean, it's a school. Is, it's a learning experience. Yeah. yeah. So this is running through the new age. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Spiritual evolution. I mean, Goes to come here. Yeah. 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 It's messed up. I mean, it's really, really, it, it, it yeah, it, it fall. That's, that's kind of like where end ears get the short end of the stick because especially the hell like ones, but you know, um, they come back here and there is a whole freaking industry ready and waiting to, just further confirm what they experience that yes, you know, everything is about love. The light is God or Jesus or, or the source or the creator, every single thing, well, not every single thing, but almost the important parts are confirmed to them when they come back. Now, the ones I feel bad about are the ones that do have like the, the bad experiences, right? Um, Cause they come back and they see everything's love and light, you know, God, I love this, that, blah, blah, blah. And they got their ass kicked in their back. And um, and it, what's really sad about a lot of them is that they um feel that they got kicked out of heaven, right? I mean, imagine coming back and feeling like God kicked you out of heaven. I right. mean, that's that's some real, real evil shit. Yeah. Real evil. I mean, that that's some mind manipulation of an epic proportion and someone has to come back and finish off their whole life and the whole time they're thinking that or at least until they resolve it within themselves that you know god doesn't like me kick me out of the kingdom i mean that's just i mean this there's crazy stuff like that happens and doesn't necessarily mean that they were even bad either i mean it just is it's sick so now they come back with a, an abandonment issue as well from, mm -hmm. from what they think is god my God, yeah. <laughs> excuse the pun. Yeah. So um, at this life review, is it, it at that point? I guess there's little to no resistance from the soul. They they kind of they've 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 bought they've put they bought the line that you know they did all right, and you know they just need to do a little bit more work. And is is there like a price at the end of this? Like, do they like sell them a dream, or like if you just do a bit more, or we'll we'll give you a better lifetime this lifetime? What what's it's tough to say exactly what goes on, but 
in so many words, that's what it kind of points to. It kind of points like, you know, like uh, you're promoted, right? I think some, you know, maybe they have less incarnations on Earth and they're, or even no incarnations on Earth, but they're part of the the matrix system, right? They, they may be the ones facilitating or interjecting with earthly experiences or maybe even being uh, a teacher or a guide or an ascended master or whatever soul group teachers, whatever you want to call them, right? There could be those types of facilitators that are so lost, so far gone that there's the matrix knows that there's no chance in hell this person's ever going to liberate themselves. And so they put them in a position that is beneficial to the matrix. And meanwhile, all they're doing is spinning their wheels and lost in the sauce. So it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Um, but I think there, there really does come a point of, of total breakdown and sometimes like degeneracy and, and, um, just like there, there's like nothing, barely anything left in someone's essence. And I think, that also kind of applies to how the world is run, right? I mean, how come humanity, you know, humanity has been around a long time. We both know that we have just been robbed of information, but we know it's been around for a long, long time. All right. And they may reset the realm. Well, they do reset the realm, but you know, we have to ask ourselves, how has humanity not gotten its shit together yet where it's not capable of standing up against this tyrannical BS, mm. this craziness that goes on, this this ruling uh, parasitic class that looms over all of us, right? Why can't humanity get it together? Because I think the ones that are in charge, let's just first say, let's let's just say that they're not AI beings, because there there is a very real chance that that's possible. Right. I mean, yeah. these could be literal NPCs programmed and they're just figureheads that are put on the, the screen that uh, we're supposed to be pissed at. Right. Or yeah. think have authority over us. So let's just for let's just say they're not NPCs, but I lean more towards that they are. But they even with an NPC type thing, they've degraded themselves so far gone that you know, the matrix is going to put them in a position like they're going to promote them, kind of like what we were talking about just a few minutes ago. I think, oh, well, you want, you want to go down to earth? You're going to have all the riches. You're going to have a plane. You're going to have houses, you know, all the women you can want, you know, you can, all the money you can want, and you're going to be in a position of authority. You'll get all this, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, they, the, you know, the carrot on the stick, right? It's like, hey, go down, do our dirty work for us, and you'll be rewarded. But to reach that point, they must be so completely lost that the matrix knows there's, it's all but impossible for them to, you know, I guess, redeem themselves. Right. And, and for find themselves, I should say, reclaim their essence. Yeah. So, so when, uh, when someone's been through the life review, is it, is it normally straight back down again? Or do they, that you said, you talk about this, like holding space, this resting area, does it vary from person to person or it's, it's no, like the, well, a resting area, you may see more in line with things like coma mm. experiences, you know, um, um, sometimes, um, yeah, those that kind of come out of amnesia or something, they might have something to say about it, but with NDEs, it's usually kind of very routine-ish. It's, um, they're, you know, they, they have their experience. It's amazing. It's incredible. Uh, they have their interactions, they have their life review. And then, um, usually it, it, it gets to a point where the matrix it will pretend like, oh, well, you know, you can stay here with us or you can go back down to earth. But I find that those are, it's all a setup job, right? It's all because it's all designed to mess with the mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they, the system will throw again, like the, the 
the the mom with cancer down on earth or or whatever the case may be and normally once it reaches the point of something involving earth um you know a connection on earth specifically um to someone that's living or what have you it's pretty it's almost instant that it's the the next step is for them to be right back in their body uh you know the only difference really could be something like comas in, in my opinion, you know, um, something where they're out, I guess, longer in terms of, uh, earth hours, I guess, or days. So it's like, kind of like a slow cajole, like you can stay with us, but you know, your, your mum's got cancer yeah. now, so you might want to think about coming down. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's really interesting because a lot of times they'll say that, you know, all of it, they'll say something like all of a sudden I started thinking about my life on earth or I started thinking about this situation on earth or, or whatever the case may be. There was one um, NDE that I remember. And it was interesting because it seemed like nothing was I think the matrix knew damn well. It, it played this one beautifully. I think what it knew is that it, this woman wasn't going to have much to want to come back to, you know? So I think it was in a, if just my gut. It seemed like it was in a more difficult kind of position with this one. So what it did is it used the nurse that was in the hospital and the, the, woman who's having the NDE outside of her body and dealing with the matrix, you know, it's the matrix is basically like communicating that, you know, the nurse is upset because they've lost. They, they can't lose another patient. You know, they can, you know, they can't do it. And so there was like that connection fostered there. And the woman came back for the freaking nurse. Oh I mean, that's, God. that means, coming back for a freaking nurse. I mean, you know, I feel bad. You're going to lose her and everything, but get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? It's, you know, but it just it's not your problem. To, it just goes to show, sorry to, to interrupt there. It just goes no, to show that good. unless you're very strong in your sovereignty, that you, you, you know, the things that you, you, you are in your living life, you carry that over into your death, right? So if you've not gained any knowledge in your physical life, it's not like you die and then you just know everything. Well, you do if they give you a little bit of experience with the fake void or whatever. But that's why it's so important to 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 look at this stuff and um, strengthen that sovereign energy and become, uh, yeah, become truly sovereign. And yeah, no leaders, no one tells you what to do. No one tells you where you're going, what you're doing, when to do it. You know, you're the you're the captain of your ship in this dimension and that dimension. Um, right. And so just that, that really underlined me, to me just the, the importance of becoming sovereign and strengthening your spirit and your soul in this lifetime. Yeah, be unrelenting. Mm. Be unrelenting. Don't, nothing is, you know, you're going your own way, doing your own path. Everything here is designed to rob us of our sovereignty. Mm. It's, it's so clear. I mean, we're, they try to stomp on us from cradle to grave, cradle to grave. Moment we get here, it's, it's just relentless. Why is that? Because it has to beat us down. It has to crush us. So we submit. And then they, it, uh, the matrix also knows that we have our, you know, our essence side, we'll, we'll, we'll say our spiritual side, you know, our uh, religious side. And they put all of these things, these religions here, because they know damn well that they need to fill that void that many of us will have. Maybe not everyone will have it, but I think the bulk of people at some point will, will have those yearnings and want to ask the big questions about life. And either they're going to fall into the prepackaged matrix marketing traps like religion or they're going to keep questioning things and it's uh all a setup job designed to rob us of our sovereignty and there's nothing more important than at least you know 
taking care of that now and leading up to and at the time of death and after death and and seeing what the fuck happens sorry excuse my language but you know seeing what happens right i mean um i don't think it can hurt and if everything is all wrong and and um you know there there is some sort of order and i just i really don't believe there is i don't i think it's all smoke and mirrors because it, it's the smoke and mirrors are and the inversion is here and it's in these astral realms constantly so if they're in both locations then we've kind of came and experienced one of the biggest con jobs in the universe multiverse so absolutely and it's interesting how they they've used the term sovereignty for themselves you know you look mm. where i'm from the the royal family and all that i mean god um the stuff they've got up to down the years and Sick. so they know it's it's almost like satanic mockery they know that our true uh, our true essence is that of sovereign and they've stolen it for themselves and we need to take that back um i just want to uh, have you got have you still got a bit of time yeah yeah i got about uh 15 20 minutes sure because uh, i just wanted you to maybe finish up on um the, just explaining pre-birth memories and just really sure. the life script um, is is if you've got time. Sure. Yeah, um, pre-birth memories are interesting. Basically, what happens is someone has a recall of usually choosing their life before coming here. A lot of times they will even recall kind of being tapped for lack of a better word on the shoulder and saying, Oh, well, you know, we, you know, we need you down on earth. We got, you know, this you know, big problem going on there and you're the only one that can do it. You know, it's, it's almost like <laughs> that. It really is. <laughs> yeah. You got a mission. Exactly. We got it, you know, saddle up, let's go. So they, you know, usually uh, there's the, a few entities involved, like we can call them teachers, uh, ascended masters, sometimes the council figures, it varies. And then the life script selection occurs, right? And it is a selection and it isn't because it's, it's really based on the buying into what you need to work on right so you're you're already programmed over these multiple incarnations and the soul classes and stuff like that and of course there is the karma and sinning and judgment component involved with all this so they may you know you may if you did something really bad they're going to hold that over you or you could just be a sucker and be thrown into a, a horrible situation like you know like born in north korea you know in a, a rice field with a hut and you know uh just got the boot on you all day by the government um so all these things play a big role in the life that someone may pick out so pre-birth memories those individuals there are it's they come here and they have a very clear recollection of that, picking that experience out. Now, what's interesting, what's really interesting about some of these experiences is, you know, the Matrix does not want these memories really coming down here. That's my gut. But I think those who are a little more rebellious, those who want to take a piece of <clears throat> that experience with them before, you know, when they get to earth, they want to have that recollection. Now, mind you, it's still a small recollection because they're, it's pathetic what they're able to bring back, even though it's got substance to us when, when, and them, when they get here, it's still a little bit of something. It's, 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 it's not, much because everyone's still memory wiped so they come but they they are fortunate enough to have this memory what's interesting is that sometimes there's this agreement that oh well if you want to have this memory these pre-birth memories and recall these when you get down there well oh how convenient your life is going to be a little shittier 
I'm not joking. Like it, that's, that's what can happen. That's uh Harold who I've uh, spoken with a number of times. He, he kind of made that agreement where they, this life was kind of, he was picking out this life and, and, and these uh, interaction with the, I think, I think it was two entities. Don't quote me on that, but, um, or three, something like that. Anyways, um, you know, but he wanted to have those memories when he came down here. And part of the didn't agreement didn't he ask to be good looking? I think I I think I watched that one. Uh yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep, be yep, be good looking. Yep. Yeah, he did say that. Yep. But he yep. had a difficult life. Yep. Yep. Not easy. Not easy. And it was worse. It was in order for him to retain the memory, he basically cut a deal. Like, okay, my life script is going to be crappier when I get here. Uh, so they, it really seems like they, it could, it, see, look, it could be a couple of things, right? It could be that, you know, they, they really don't want these memories coming here, but at the same time, it's like these memories come here and they don't really, most people don't believe it. It doesn't really impact many. Mm. I mean, let's just be honest. Right. Um, and then the other way, it could just be a way to, you know, that maybe they don't care, you know, they, they, the information comes, well, oh, so what? We'll just make their life lucier for us. So it's it's still a winning situation. You know, they're <laughs> it's not like um they're losing out by any means, right? They're if it's a, a worse life script and more pain and suffering and trauma, then the system is gonna benefit it benefit from it with uh, the loosh. So So do they do they agree on a death or a job? That- can't, I, bet they leave that, I bet they leave that one out. The death, no death. Um, death. You really, you really don't get much on that. You, yeah. you. They, they. A lot of times, yeah. The job thing, um, uh, geographical location, uh, picking out parents, um, uh, maybe schooling, career path. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Loved I, ones, maybe. I, I would never have chosen the UK. I can't stand it there. So <laughs> I don't know what happened with my life script. Maybe I maybe I cut a deal with them. <laughs> you could have. Yeah, I mean, who the heck knows? I mean, it, it's it's so tough to say. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, I don't know. Sometimes uh, certain things in my life are like that too. It's uh, areas I wouldn't really prefer to be. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the the payoff is you get the memories, but your your life is is more difficult, basically. That's really what it seems like. Um, but it, I wouldn't say it's it's always like that. I mean, there there's um, well, actually, the the other case is uh, it's a pretty well known one now is Christian Suddenberg, I think is his last name. Um, he's a fascinating case. Um. That was, I did a video on that. It's just titled Rebirth Memories Exposed the Soul Trap or, or something like that. It's a couple of years old. And with his case, he, he was agreeing to come down here. He didn't want to come down. He couldn't, he was fighting it kind of tooth and nail, but he wanted to be like the again for lack of a better term ascended masters the teachers he wanted to be like them and basically was kind of conned into thinking like oh well you know like i need to spiritually evolve in order for me to kind of get like them and be like them i need to keep (laughs) reincarnating on earth or or i like you know i gotta go down there this time and blah 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 now what's crazy about this one tony is that he self-aborted himself i think it was twice Really? And so he was in the womb and I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to, I don't want to be born. And, you know, so it makes you wonder. Yeah. Abortions. abortions. I mean, not even abortions, like just like miscarriages, miscarriages, you know? So I've worked with people that have told me that they remember being in the birth canal, not wanting to come out. I've actually had people tell me that. So that, that, that wouldn't surprise me either. Um, just just very briefly, because we went through the whole process without without mentioning the memory wipe. <laughs> no, um, yeah, that's the king. 
Yeah, that's, that's the king. The that's the king of evil, of all the evil mm -hmm. things that they do. Um, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, and most people will, will know what it is, but is there a process to that, or how does it manifest? I can't really say there's... Um, I mean, in some pre-birth memories, there is discussion that, you know, they're like they they know that they're not going to have their memories. A lot of times there's a representation of water with the memory wipe um, or even the programming of one's, um, or I guess, life script. The water absolutely, though, represents the memory wipe. Um, and this goes back to the Greeks. Um, I mean, so it's, 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 you know, the, we call it the, the water forgetfulness, river forgetfulness, things like that. It's, uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of like the representation or the symbolic interpretation of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we come here lifetime after lifetime, not knowing where we came from, why we are here, where we are going, what our purpose is, all this stuff. And the biggest giveaway is the memory wipe. Not only, you know, we don't have any memory of where we just came from, but what about, think about it, where were we before even coming into this realm? Before right. coming into the just the overall matrix system, the astral realms, all this stuff, where were we before all of that? What else did we experience? And, and this is why I think it's so difficult and how we get stuck here is because we get used to it. We get used to the sensory experience. We get used to the attachments. We come here over and over and over again, and we lose a little bit of ourselves each time. And I think it gets harder and harder and harder. And then we may reach kind of like a plateau where like our BS meter starts to kind of go off like within our essence more, or it goes the opposite direction and someone just completely loses themselves and is all but gone. You yeah. know, which, you know, that's why you get such crazy, nasty things that go on in, in pure evil. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the the memory wipe is big. It's ma well, it's it's the king. I mean, it's how if we don't have any memories, if we are here, if constantly in NDEs, all these experiencer cases, they are constantly telling us that we're here to learn and grow and evolve spiritually and work on ourselves. If you do not have a memory of what you're supposed to evolve on, what you're supposed to work on, or what sins you're supposed to redeem yourself for, or any of this stuff, how the hell does a memory wipe make sense? Because we're in a massive scam, a massive deception. Absolutely, absolutely. And I just add into what you said there, I think we go way beyond this matrix and the dimensions yes. within this matrix. And I think people need to uh, open their minds as to, you know, just what we're capable of and the experiences that we can have. The way I describe this is we're in a, we're in a computer game, one of many different computer games that we can choose to experience. It's just this computer game, we've been here a little bit longer than we should. Yeah. I don't even like using the word trap so much because that implies that it's a permanent forever thing. I just think temporarily we've been caught up here. And I think like sure. just just to underline the points that you made right at the start. You yeah, know, I hate the trap thing too. Yeah, intention is everything. Sovereign is everything. And Mark, I think that's a great place to leave it. You've been an absolutely fantastic guest. Thanks, Tony. Fascinated with what you said, even though I've heard you say it so many times in your videos, just breaking the whole thing down step by step like you've done. Um, I think you're one of the best, if not the best, at it. So uh, thanks, brother. Keep doing all the work that you're doing. Um, where can people find you? Websites, YouTube's. Um, well, yeah, I mean YouTube. Um, let's see, uh, YouTube Odyssey and Rumble. The channel's under Forever Conscious Research Channel or Forever Conscious Research. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram. All this stuff is in the, the about tab of. The YouTube channel and in the description tab of every video on all the platforms. I also do a little bit of truth in gaming on Twitch every once in a while. Um, a website will be coming at some point that will be foreverconsciousresearch.com, but chances are when this video is published, it won't be there, but 
in the future it may be so there there is some of that coming at some point um and uh yeah so feel free mainly i would just for you know anyone kind of watching this just best thing to do is look at the description tabs of my videos for updated links and uh, i also have an email list which is uh, just a good way to stay in touch um in case uh, something happens on any of these platforms so and i have two youtube backup channels as well just as a precaution so great great yes and um, i'll obviously put all your links in the in the description and uh, yeah Fun thank moment. you for your time um and keep up the great work thank you tony i really appreciate it and just uh, one last thing i wanted to say about um yeah that this the, i don't like the trap word either uh, for the exact reason you said because it does imply um like oh like you can't get out of it or something like that and there's there's we're we're not forced we're not. We come here, I think, of our own volition, just to want to experience something, and we get caught up in this mess. And yeah, the reason why I put the Matrix Reincarnation Soul Trap is because a lot of people search Soul Trap. So yeah, absolutely. It's it has to be put and there. That's, that's what I'll be search. in the title of this video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So no, um, definitely we can get out. And I think I've been saying for a long time. I think it's uh, for many of us the the last time around. So. Let's enjoy it while we can, yeah? Damn right, brother. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Tony. I really appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Glad we finally got to do it. Yeah, bye now.